The Cadaver Synod, held in January 897 AD, was one of the most bizarre and macabre episodes in the history of the Catholic Church. This infamous ecclesiastical trial took place in Rome, where Pope Stephen VI ordered the exhumation and posthumous prosecution of his predecessor, Pope Formosus. Background, Pope Formosus served as the head of the Catholic Church from 891 until his death in 896. His tenure was characterized by intense political strife and numerous controversies, reflecting the complex interplay of power within the church and the broader political landscape of the time. Formosus navigated a papacy fraught with challenges, particularly involving the ever-shifting alliances and conflicts among Roman noble families and the Holy Roman Empire. A significant aspect of Formosus's papacy was his involvement in the ongoing power struggles between the Holy Roman Empire and various Roman aristocratic factions. The dynamics of these relationships were complicated and often volatile, with different families and political entities vying for influence and control. This period in history was marked by a continuous tug-of-war between secular and ecclesiastical powers, making Formosus's position as Pope particularly precarious. Throughout his papacy, Formosus found himself at odds with numerous factions, one of the most notable being the Spoleto family. This powerful noble family held significant sway in Rome and had a contentious relationship with the papacy. Formosus's dealings with the Spoletos and other influential families were indicative of the broader power struggles that defined his time as Pope. His actions and decisions often reflected the need to navigate these turbulent and sometimes dangerous waters carefully. The political landscape of 9th century Rome was anything but stable, and Formosus's papacy was no exception. The conflicts and alliances he engaged in were emblematic of the larger issues facing the church and the region. The ongoing disputes with noble families and the Holy Roman Empire underscored the fragile nature of papal authority during this period. Formosus's efforts to maintain and assert his position amid such turmoil were a testament to the complexities of leadership within the church. In conclusion, Pope Formosus's reign from 891 to 896 was a period marked by significant political conflict and controversy. His papacy was deeply intertwined with the power dynamics between the Holy Roman Empire and various Roman noble families, reflecting the turbulent nature of 9th century papal politics. Despite the numerous challenges and disputes he faced, Formosus's actions during his tenure highlight the intricate and often precarious balance of power that defined his time as Pope. The trial after Pope Formosus died in 896, the papacy was immediately taken up by Pope Boniface VI. However, Boniface VI's reign was incredibly brief, lasting only 15 days before he also died. His short-lived papacy did little to stabilize the chaotic political environment that had characterized Formosus's tenure. Following Boniface VI's death, Stephen VI ascended to the papal throne. Pope Stephen VI harbored deep animosity towards his predecessor, Formosus. This animosity was likely fueled by significant political pressures and Stephen's affiliations with the powerful Spoleto family. The Spoletos had long been antagonistic towards Formosus, and their influence over Stephen VI played a crucial role in the events that followed. In a move that shocked contemporaries and remains unprecedented in church history, Stephen VI ordered the exhumation of Formosus's corpse. The body of Formosus was dressed in papal vestments and brought to the papal court. This macabre scene saw the deceased pope's corpse propped up on a throne to stand trial in what became known as the Cadaver Synod. To facilitate this bizarre trial, a deacon was appointed to speak on behalf of the deceased Formosus. The charges brought against Formosus were severe and included perjury, the crime of coveting the papacy, while he was bishop of another diocese a canonical offense known as transmigration, and violations of church canon law. The spectacle of the trial underscored the depth of Stephen VI's hostility and the intense political motivations behind these actions. The trial proceeded with a grotesque display of accusations and defenses, all directed at the lifeless Formosus. The charges were recounted, and the deacon made attempts to defend the deceased pope, However, the outcome seemed predetermined, given the deep-seated animosities and political undercurrents at play. The court ultimately found Formosus guilty on all counts. With the guilty verdict, Stephen VI declared all of Formosus's papal acts invalid. 
This dramatic nullification of Formicus's deeds was a direct affront to his legacy and aimed to erase his influence. The punishment meted out to Formicus's corpse was particularly degrading and symbolic. The three fingers he had used for consecrations were cut off, signifying the invalidation of his sacramental authority. The grotesque nature of the trial did not end there. After the mutilation, Formicus's remains were initially buried but were soon exhumed again and thrown into the Tiber River. This act of discarding his body into the river was intended as the ultimate desecration, aiming to obliterate Formicus's memory and spiritual impact. The aftermath of the Cadaver Synod had significant ramifications for the church and its political landscape. The shocking treatment of Formosus's corpse caused outrage and further division within the church and among the Roman nobility. It also exposed the extent to which political motivations could corrupt ecclesiastical proceedings. The grotesque trial of Formosus's corpse remains one of the most infamous episodes in papal history. It highlighted the turbulent and often violent nature of 9th century church politics. The episode is a stark reminder of the lengths to which individuals and factions would go to assert dominance and settle scores in the volatile environment of medieval Rome. In conclusion, the events following Formosus' death, particularly the cadaver synod under Stephen VI, underscore the extreme political and personal vendettas that shaped the papacy during this period. The trial of Formosus' corpse was a dramatic and unprecedented act that left a lasting impact on the church and its history, illustrating the intense power struggles and the depths of animosity that characterized the era. Aftermath, the aftermath of the Cadaver Synod had profound and far-reaching implications. The grotesque spectacle of putting a deceased pope on trial outraged many, deepening the chaos and instability within the church. This event exacerbated the already tense political climate in Rome and undermined the credibility of the papal office. The immediate political instability that followed was palpable. Pope Stephen VI, who had orchestrated the Cadaver Synod, quickly found himself the target of intense backlash. Within months of the trial, Stephen VI was deposed and imprisoned. His fall from power culminated in a violent end as he was later strangled in his cell. In the wake of Stephen VI's demise, subsequent popes endeavored to address the scandal and mitigate its damaging effects. Pope Theodore II, who briefly held the papal office in late 897, took decisive action to rectify the situation. He convened a synod that nullified the decrees of the Cadaver Synod and ordered that Formosus's body be retrieved from the Tiber River and reburied with proper honor and respect. Following Pope Theodore II, Pope John IX also took steps to condemn the Cadaver Synod and its ramifications. He reaffirmed the nullification of its decrees and went a step further by prohibiting the future trial of dead bodies. This move was intended to prevent any recurrence of such a macabre and politically motivated spectacle, aiming to restore some degree of dignity and stability to the papacy. The efforts of these subsequent popes to overturn the cadaver synod's outcomes were crucial in attempting to heal the divisions and restore the church's integrity. By condemning the actions of Stephen VI and reinstating Formosus's honor, they sought to move past one of the most scandalous episodes in the history of the papacy. Despite these efforts, the cadaver synod left a lasting stain on the church's reputation. It highlighted the extent to which political vendettas and personal animosities could infiltrate and corrupt ecclesiastical proceedings. The event remains a stark reminder of the volatile intersection of politics and religion during this period. In conclusion, the aftermath of the Cadaver Synod was marked by intense efforts to reverse its damage and restore order within the Church. The actions taken by Popes Theodore II and John IX were pivotal in condemning the grotesque trial and seeking to reinstate the sanctity of the papal office. However, the episode also served as a grim illustration of the depths of political intrigue and chaos that characterized the era. Historical significant, the Cadaver Synod stands out as a striking example of the extreme measures taken during periods of intense political and religious turmoil. This episode, where a deceased pope was exhumed and put on trial, starkly illustrates how deeply personal vendettas and political rivalries could infiltrate and influence religious institutions and practices. 
This bizarre and grotesque event is often cited as a low point in papal history. It underscores the vulnerability of the church to corruption and factionalism, particularly during the medieval period when political alliances and enmities frequently dictated ecclesiastical decisions and actions. The Cadaver Synod did not merely reflect personal animosities but also the broader power struggles of the time. During this period, the lines between religious and political spheres were often blurred. The actions of Pope Stephen VI in orchestrating the trial of his deceased predecessor, Formosus, reveal the extent to which the papacy could be manipulated by external pressures and internal conflicts. This manipulation was facilitated by the intense rivalries among Roman noble families and the broader geopolitical tensions involving the Holy Roman Empire. The spectacle of the Cadaver Synod had far-reaching consequences. It not only shocked contemporary observers, but also deepened the chaos and instability within the Church. The trial and its aftermath highlighted the fragile nature of papal authority and the ease with which it could be undermined by factional interests. Subsequent popes, recognizing the damaging impact of the Cadaver Synod, took steps to address its repercussions and restore some measure of dignity to the papacy. The actions of Popes Theodore II and John IX in nullifying the Synod's decrees and prohibiting future trials of dead bodies were pivotal in attempting to repair the Church's tarnished image and reaffirm the sanctity of its institutions. Despite these efforts, the Cadaver Synod left an indelible mark on the history of the papacy. It remains a vivid reminder of the period's political machinations and the susceptibility of religious authority to corruption. The episode serves as a cautionary tale about the dangers of allowing personal and political conflicts to dictate religious actions and decisions. In conclusion, the Cadaver Synod exemplifies the extreme lengths to which individuals and factions would go during times of political and religious upheaval. It highlights the deep entanglement of the church and secular power struggles and the resulting vulnerabilities to corruption and factionalism, marking one of the most scandalous chapters in papal history.